it's hard to believe this whole lawsuit is about that. Hey everybody, this is TJR. You know, when my Stairway to Heaven versus Taurus video went viral, I received numerous comments from viewers stating that if Led Zeppelin lost the case, it would set a bad precedent and open up a floodgate of bogus copyright lawsuits. To which I always tried to respond, that ship has already sailed. And that the lawsuit that everybody should have been worried about was the 2015 decision in the trial over Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines, in which a jury ordered Thicke and his co-writer slash producer Pharrell Williams to pay a combined $7.4 million to the estate of late soul singer Marvin Gaye for infringing the copyright of Gaye's 1970 song Got to Give It Up. Now, by and large, the two main elements for which we determine copyright infringement have always been melody and lyrics. But in the Blurred Lines case, the Marvin Gaye estate was basically told that they could legally copyright a groove. Now, if you don't have any musical education, saying that you can copyright a groove would be like letting someone copyright a common phrase like, God only knows. God only knows was a common phrase that existed long before Brian Wilson used it in his amazing song of the same name. Now, Brian Wilson can copyright the lyrics and melody of a song, but his use of the phrase does not mean that he can copyright that phrase and keep anyone else from using it in their art or their daily speech. But if he were to try to, I hope that everybody out there watching would be smart enough to see just how crippling that would be to art and to our daily lives. Needless to say, the jury's decision regarding the Blurred Lines case has opened up the floodgate. In late July, a jury found Katy Perry liable for copying the underlying beat of Marcus Gray's 2008 Christian rap song, Joyful Noise, for her hit single, Dark Horse, in a verdict handed down on Monday, July 29th, in Los Angeles Federal Court. Now, three very well-qualified YouTubers, Mary Spender, Rick Beato, and Adam Neely, have already made videos explaining why the case against the song Dark Horse and the verdict handed down by the jury is a travesty. And I agree with all three of them. In fact, I recommend you watch all three videos. But if you only had time for one, I would point out the video by Adam Neely, which is extremely thorough in its argument against the decision and also is 100% effective in completely eviscerating the case made by Todd Decker, who was the defendant's expert musical witness. And at this point, I just want to quote Adam Neely's YouTube thumbnail, you can't own a minor scale. Once again, watch the video and you will understand. Going back to my original analogy, letting someone copyright a musical groove is like letting someone copyright a common phrase. But letting someone copyright a scale is like allowing someone to copyright the letters in the alphabet. Now, the reason why I haven't commented on this case yet is because I already felt that these three YouTubers previously mentioned have already said what needs to be said, and that also I think they're more qualified to argue against the verdict than I am, and also because I felt I had nothing else to add to the conversation. Until I realized that I did. I don't like having to have to say this, but I do. America, the country I live in, and the country I do love, sadly, does not value musical education in our public schools. And as a result, we have created over the decades, a population that is, for the most part, musically illiterate. This is not an insult. It is sad and unfortunate truth. So with that in mind, I would say that one of two things is happening here in regards to the whole Katy Perry lawsuit. Marcus Gray, AKA Christian rapper Flame, and or his team is, like a lot of the population, musically illiterate and don't realize just how stupid and baseless their case is, and just how damaging their lawsuit was and will be to the health of art and culture in our society. Or, two, they are musically literate and do realize what they are doing, but don't care. And knowing that most Americans are musically literate means that they can more than likely put one over on a jury and probably win and will more than likely make a lot of money. And that does seem to be what has happened. They have now made a lot of money. I want to add that this lawsuit demanded a trial by jury, and 
Adam Neely does point that out in his video as well. This fact would help facilitate the ability to, as I described earlier, pull one over on what would probably be, and what probably was, an uneducated jury. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I want to add is, so much of modern pop music is so devoid of melody now, that even with these two dangerous, precedent-setting cases, it's no wonder we're seeing more lawsuits. For decades, melody has been the primary element of popular music. But since the 1980s, we have been slowly seeing a gradual cultural move away from melody, replacing the emphasis on sound design and groove. There are lots of songs, and many of them very popular, that use similar chord progressions, the same grooves, and even identical sound design. But we don't notice because the melodies are so individually distinct from each other. And with everybody sampling each other and or using the same samples, the same beats per minute, and using the same synth patches, I'm quite frankly surprised that we don't see more lawsuits and that we haven't seen more of them yet. The music industry definitely needs to up its game and demand more originality from the artists they sign and promote. But when our legal system allows the Marvin Gaye estate to copyright a groove, and also allows Marcus Gray, aka Flame, to copyright what is basically a completely unoriginal and terribly uncreative melody line, then we are killing creativity. Because no matter how original you try to be in your compositions, there are fundamental and essential building blocks to musical composition and songwriting that we all need to be able to use. Just like we all need to use letters in the alphabet and common phrases when we write. With these two dangerous precedent-setting lawsuits, we are taking away those necessary building blocks. We are stifling creativity. Both of these lawsuits need to be appealed and they need to be struck down. Or pretty soon, it will be the musical equivalent of someone copywriting the alphabet. This is TJR. Those are my thoughts. Please tell me what you think. I am going to leave links for the three YouTube creators whose videos I have mentioned in this video. I do recommend you check them all out. Everybody, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Your dog could write that.